In this video tutorial, we will use Adapt Builder's integrated column design engine to check our columns for code compliance. The integrated design engine will check moment, shear, and axle capacity of the column based on the design loads at the column and reinforcement within the column defined by you using the PCA load contour method. On screen, we have a version of the Adapt Builder multi-level tutorial model that can be found in the help file with some minor changes to add more column sizes to the model. In addition, we've also added P-delta load combinations to the model. We've already run this model in multi-level mode for all load combinations, including our P-delta load combinations so that we can evaluate columns based on the second order effects. For more information on entering P-delta load combinations into a model, please refer to our help file. Before we can go ahead and evaluate our columns for code compliance, we need to define section types and assign those section types to our columns. Section types allow us to group like columns based on dimension or geometry, material, and reinforcement. So I'll come to my column design ribbon and I'll click on columns only button so I display only the columns in my model. Then on the column design ribbon, we can come up to the define section type icon and click that to open our type manager dialog. In the type manager dialog, we can add section types or modify section types or delete section types. If I click new to add a section type, I can give it a name. So we'll say 12 by 12 for a 12 by 12 column. And we can see the column show up in our graphic. If I select the section type, I can see the material used for the section type, the geometry, as well as the reinforcement. And as we update reinforcement, the graphic on the right will update as well. So I could go ahead and set, set up our section types manually, but instead I'm going to go ahead and have the program set up section types for me. So I'm going to come out of this section type manager and I'm going to select all the columns on screen. So I can window select or say control A to select all. And then in the properties grid under column or under general section, we see the section type property. Currently it's set to none. If we click on that property box to expand the drop down, we can see that we have three options for auto assigning section types. The first option is auto assign to existing, meaning if there's an uh, existing section type with the dimensions for the column that you are assigning, the program will assign that column to that section type. If there is not an existing section type, the program will create a new one. Then we have the auto assign new group, so the program will always assign a new group for each new size of column. And then we have the last one, which is auto assign new individual, which will assign a new group for each individual segment of the column. So in our case, we wanna assign a new group. So one group for each dimensioned column. So we'll go ahead and click auto assign new group. And the program quickly creates our section types and we can see that coming back into our type manager. So we have some section types here. Now the section types are, you know, controlling the material and the geometry of the columns now. So now if we want to make changes to geometry, material, or reinforcement, we have to do it through the section type. So in this model, our material property for the concrete strength was different between the upper columns and the lower columns in the model. So we need to split out those columns quickly. I'll just come to the side view and we'll select the upper four level of columns. And we'll go ahead and in our properties grid, we'll just choose assign new group for our section type again. And this time when we come back to our type manager, we now see a few new groups appended with one. So the one in this model, we're gonna assume means upper column. We could change the one to say upper or something other than one to, to denote that it where it's located in the model. But for this case, we're just gonna use the one to delineate that these are the upper columns. And I know that my 18 by 18 and 18 circular columns are only lower columns. So I'm gonna delete the lower design section type for that dimension. 
And now we have our section type set up and we could go ahead and come in here one by one and change the material property, change the reinforcement. As you can see, we just have some very minimal base reinforcement assigned to the column to start with. But instead of changing these all through the type manager, we have a better way to edit these section types quickly. I'll click OK to exit the type manager and we'll click edit section types button in the column design ribbon. Since I had columns selected, the program opened the section type editor with only the section types for the selected columns. I actually want to see all, so I'll cancel out, and then I'll click on white space to deselect, and I'll go back into the section type manager. And now we can see all the section types assigned to our column. And now we can start to assign our properties as well as our reinforcement to the columns. So the first thing I want to do is I want to assign the material property. So I'll use this top typical row. This allows us to assign a property to every section type below. So I'll go ahead and assign 6,000 PSI to every section type. But then for these upper columns, we'll just go ahead and change it to 5,000 PSI because this is we know that the upper columns use a, a lighter concrete strength. So next, we'll go ahead and define our shear reinforcement. And for this project, we want to just use number four spaced at 12 and see how that works for our columns. And now we can go ahead and define our vertical reinforcement. So for this project, we're going to use number eights to start. And then we're going to do about uh, one bar every six inches in the columns. So for the 18 by 30, we'll do three by six for the 30 or for 20 by 30. We'll again do uh, we'll do four by six for that just to be a little different. And then we'll put uh, six by four for the 30 by 20. So it's just the orientation for this column is different. And then again for the 30 by 18, the same as the 18 by 30, just the different orientation, six and three. And then we have our 32 by 12. So we'll do six by two. And then we have 18 by 18. So we'll do three by three. And then we have our 18 circular. We'll leave that at six for now. And then we have 32 by 12 upper and 18 by 30 upper. So we'll go ahead and make those the same. So that would be six for the 32 side, two for the 12 side, and then uh, three for the 18 side here and six for the 30 side here. So after entering our reinforcement, we can look here and see the row value for each section type. So the row value is based on the reinforcement assigned to the section type and also the geometry of the section type. Now Adapt Builder flags 1% by default as minimum row. We can change that in the design settings as you'll see later. Um, but for our project, we want to be above 2% for minimum row. So we're going to go ahead and bump up reinforcement within the square and circular column to be above 2% row. So we'll go ahead and change the square column to have four bars per face and row side. And the circular column will go ahead and change to eight bars. I can click OK to exit out of the type editor. And now we can set our design settings for how we want to design our columns or code check our columns. I'll click design settings to open the design options window. And at the top of the design options window, we can see the load combinations that we ran for the model. Below that, we can see the design parameters that we can use to check our columns for code compliance. So we can check our columns for slenderness. Uh, we can choose what force source we want to uh, use to, to code check our columns with. That's FEM force or tributary method force. And then there's also options for enveloping the two FEM and tributary methods. We have our load reduction, so we can include live load reduction or not. We have our max utilization that we can set. It's set to one by default, but we can change that. In addition, we have the code that we're using, which is ACI 2019. And then we have our compression stress block, which can be parabolic or rectangular. We're gonna use parabolic. And below that, we have our design constraints where we can see our minimum and maximum row percentages. So by default, the program is one and eight, one for minimum, eight for maximum. Uh, we've already changed those for 2 and 4% in this model. Now for our design, we want to go ahead and consider slenderness effects. And when we do that, when we choose yes, the program automatically defaults to using FEMP delta as the force source. 
And up top, we see only P-delta combinations available for the evaluation of the columns. So we'll select our P-delta combinations, and we'll go ahead and click OK out of our design options, and we'll click Solve to solve the columns. When we click Solve, this opens the design group selection, and so it lists the section types that we're designing as well as the number of columns we're designing out of the number of columns assigned to that section type. Because we didn't select any columns, the program uh, populated the dialog box with all section types and uh, we're going to be designing or code checking all columns. So we'll go ahead and click on this code check button and the program will start to check evaluate these columns for code compliance. Once it's finished, we can go ahead and read our results. And now that it's finished, we can go ahead and click OK. And we're going to come to an isometric view. And we're going to go to the Analysis tab on our uh, results browser. And we're going to expand the column tree and then the individual column design results tree. If I go ahead and click on Status, we can see that we have some columns failing, unacceptable, and some columns are set for borderline, meaning they're they're failing, but they're very close to passing. So we can go ahead and check our utilization. So our VNT utilization, and we can see on the side here that our utilization is within one for VNT. So we're okay here, and the results browser also shows that as well. And if we click on M versus M utilization, we can see the program shows no good, and we can see it's above one, which is not good, but we can't really tell I mean, we can see by the red that these are the, the columns that are failing, but we can't really tell once we get closer to this one value if they're failing or if they're passing. It's just showing the actual value, the contour of the value of utilization. So I'm going to come to my display ribbon or display tab, and I'm going to change my utilization display from value to status. And when I do that, now I can see which ones are unacceptable. And they're the same ones that are unacceptable for our status as well. So now we can come and start to look into why these are unacceptable. I'll select this first borderline column here. This is our 18 by 30 section type. And I'll click on the detailed report button. This opens an Excel spreadsheet showing a summary of the design as well as other information on these other tabs here. On the summary page we can see the column dimensions, the reinforcement assigned to the column, as well as the unity checks and status of the column. In addition we can see our PM diagrams as well and the unity checks. So coming through and looking, we can see we're borderline, and on the right side, we can see the status of our checks. And we can see that our axial bending capacity check is borderline. Our unity is 1.03, where our maximum is 1.0. So we're going to have to go ahead and increase reinforcement to in this column to bring the unity check below 1. Before I leave this report, I just want to show on the detailed report page, we have more detailed column design information. We have a loads page which shows the loads that were given to the or passed to the column and then highlights the governing load combination. And then lastly, we have our interaction diagram page which shows a larger view of our interaction diagrams. And we also have our PM data so that you can extract the PM data for any purpose necessary. So I'll go ahead and close this report now and we want to check one of these columns that are failing. So the same way, I'll select the column. This is our 18 by 18 section type, our upper section type, and click on Detailed Report. And again, we see the same information. We see that this uh, column currently is uh, biaxial bending, not uniaxial bending, and it's unacceptable. And we can see the status of our bending check fails and we're at a 1.27 unity check instead of one. Everything else is passing, so we just need to solve this column for uh, this bending capacity. We need to increase the column's capacity for bending moment. So we'll go ahead and exit out of this report again, and now we'll come to our section type editor. I want to edit just these two section types, 
So I'll select them and click on the edit section type button. Now for our 18 by 30, we needed to add a little bit more reinforcement. So I'm just going to add one bar for each both for both the face and the row bar. It increases a little bit of the reinforcement and should get us past that borderline check. Now for the square column, we're at 2.93 row. Uh, if I go ahead and add more reinforcement, we're going to start to push our four for maximum row and I don't want to get too congested in the column. So instead of doing that and since we have room with the architect to increase the column to 20 inches max, I'm going to go ahead and increase the column to 20 inches. So I'm going to select the A side in the section type editor and click 20 on my keyboard and click enter and that will accept the change. Notice that the section type name has now changed because we have this selection set for automatically update design section name. So if the design section name follows the default format of section type names from Adapt Builder, when a change is made to the A or B dimension, the change will also be reflected in the name if this option is turned on. So this is a quick way of just, you know, updating the section type uh, geometry as well as the name at the same time. So I'll go ahead and exit out of here. We've made our changes and the results of the column design or column code check clear. And we'll go ahead and run the column code check one more time. So I'll click solve, click on code check, and we'll let this go ahead and run. I think last time it got to 20% and finished. So let's see here, it should be pretty quick. And now we're go we're done, and so we can click OK, and we can see our status already is OK, but we'll click on it just to view our status, and we are good with our status. This means our Unity checks are passing, and our row checks are passing. And we can go ahead and and check the VNT utilization again. We're on uh, status instead of value, but I want to see the value now. So I can see the value of the, the Unity checks. So I'll go back to display and change this from status, utilization display from status, back to value. And now we can see the values. And we're pretty good under one here. So we're OK with our bending check or our shear check. And now we'll go ahead and do our bending check. And we can see that we're pushing the limit at our bending check. So we're OK. We can go ahead and, and say this is OK because we're within our limits or we could then, you know, break out this column from from the uh, section type uh, into its own section type and then modify the column so that we bring that unity check down further uh, without affecting other columns in our design that are OK for for the unity check. For more information on the code check of columns using Adapt Builder's integrated column design engine, please refer to the help menu or visit www.reza.com.